Hello friends, welcome to Inside Text. This is a platform to learn about power transmission elements and its control system. So continuing in the tap changer in transformer series, today we are going to learn about convolute tap changer. We have created many videos about testing, wiring, battery set maintenance and different kind of testing and continuing about the tap changing series. There are many videos, link to all these videos will be available in the description box. You can uh, go and check out the videos. So friends, we have discussed why we need tap changer and what is the reason that we regulate the voltage in the transformer. So we need to regulate the output voltage of the transformer according to the grid code. We have seen the importance of grid code voltage. We have also seen different voltage levels that we have to maintain and how the rated voltage is important. So you can watch in our previous video the basics about load tap changes. We have also seen the transformer principle and how voltage ratio is equals to turns ratio and how uh, we are working on the principle of tap changing, right? So all this information you can get in our previous video. So there are mainly two types of tap changes in the transformer. In the previous video, we have already discussed about offload tap changes. So in today's video, we will be discussing about onload tap changing in the transformer. So on load tap changer, these are different tap positions. We have also discussed uh, this in the offload tap changer. So now let us see how the on load tap changer winding is there. Okay. And how this tap changing process occurs. So first of all, let us see the winding. So this is the secondary. And the secondary output, you can see over here, LV output is 440 volts, okay. On the HV side, there are different kinds of tappings in the winding. So, the winding on the L, on the HV side looks something like this, okay. It is having different sections. And in this sections also, let us give some number, nomenclature. So, this is the primary winding. And as I said, nomenclature A, B, C, D and E. Right, and again in the between this section we will have some terminals. Okay, so these are the terminals that are taken out based on the tap position. Okay, and uh, we will give numbering to these terminals also. So C is one, two, three, four, and five. It is having five tap positions over here. Okay, generally. Uh, for uh, higher voltage levels, we are having 17 tap numbers, but uh, only for information, we are sharing this uh, smaller transformer having only five tap positions. So now you can see this nomenclature is done, and over here, this OLTC section is connected in the transformer, and this these terminals are taken out into this OLTC section. So let us see that. So, these terminals are taken out as numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. And in, internally, these are connected with the transformer winding like this. So, each terminal is taken out on the OLTC section and internally all these are connected like this. Each stepping is connected like this. Now, there is this switch that is rotating. Okay. Now we are talking about onload tap changer. So the position of this switch will be changing from 1 to 2 in on condition. When the transformer is in on condition, this position will be moving. Okay. So in today's video, the important part is we will understand how this tap position is being changed when the transformer is in on condition and also which part of winding comes into picture when we are discussing about changing of the tap positions. So now you can see section A, B is not yet connected with this switch. So from B there is a connection that is given to this switch. Okay. 
Now at present, let us see what winding is there and how the current flows in this winding. So at present, you can see this winding is like this from A to B and it is connected to the switch and it is at a position 1 and this entire winding is in the picture. Now, as we have already discussed and the basic principle of transformer tap changing is if you want to increase the voltage, higher the voltage, higher the turns number, right? So, bigger the winding, voltage will be higher. If you want to reduce the voltage, then you will have to cut down the winding. So, less the number of turns, less the voltage, okay? But at this, you can see at a position 1, the voltage level is highest. Voltage level is highest and the winding that is connected over here is having largest number of turns. Okay, so higher the voltage, bigger the size of the winding. Lesser the voltage, lesser the size of the winding. So at now, current position is the highest voltage level and let us see how the current flows right now. See, this is how the current path is formed, okay? Starting from A to point E. Now, this is how the switch will be moving from position number 1 to position number 2. Okay, now let us analyze this movement in detail. As you can see, this switch is, is having two arms. This is the first term of the switch that is a solid complete material and the second is divided into two parts. We are having a resistance present in between okay, and then it is connected to this solid arm. Now what is the reason for this resistance we will discuss in detail. So now this is the tap position 1. okay. You can see how the current is flowing in this position starting from A to B and the arm is connected to only one, okay, first one, first number of tap, okay, and through that the complete winding is coming into picture and you can see, okay, now let us see how the tap position changes to position number two. So, this is the position number two. You can see in this position, this arm is connected to both the tappings, tap 1 and tap number 2. In this case, let us see how the current will flow. So, the current in this case will now be flowing through both the tappings, through 1 and 2. Okay, because it is having some potential difference, okay. At between 1 and 2, there will be two currents, there will be currents flowing through both this winding and there will be two currents because of this, right? So, to avoid this circulating current, okay, and because of this potential difference, there will be some internal current flowing also. So, now let us see the internal current that will be flowing. So, this internal current will also be flowing between these two terminals, right? So, if you understand basics about protection, then you will know this internal current will be causing intertent short. This is intertent short winding of the transformer, right? Now, this may cause the tripping of the transformer, which we do not require because this is just the circulating current and this is not any kind of fault. So, to reduce this interton short current, okay, we are providing a resistance over here which will limit this circulating current. As the circulating current is reduced below certain limits, there will not be any kind of tripping due to this changing of the tap position, right? So, because of that, we are providing a resistance in one arm, okay? And now, we will move to the next position.
so position number 3 in this position you can see the current is flowing only through second winding right and the voltage will be as per tap position 2 only right now tap position 4 so this is the position 4 okay so it is completely now connected to second winding only and current will be flowing from here so you can see that the connection over here is done in such a way that before leaving tap position 1, tap position 2 is connected. So this is make before break circuit we are using and this is the reason we can easily change the tap in on load tap changer like right? in on load condition of the transformer also. So here the current will be flowing something like this completely through winding number 2. Okay, and moving on to next step position. So, this is the position number 5. In this position, again, we will have this kind of current flowing. So, this is our initial condition and this is same. So, step position 5 and position number 1 is same. So, uh, at this in this position, we can say that tap changing process is now complete. Okay, and we have now moved from tap 1 to tap 2. Right, so this is the sequence in which on load tap changing is done in the transformer. Right, and this is how you can change from 2 to 3, 4 and 5. Okay, as you can see, the winding will reduce as you move towards step 5. Okay, so... Uh, and again over here this is a stop position so it will restrict this arm from going this side okay so you will have to come back to position number one after this right so now we will see once again uh, all how the tap positions are changing so this is how the initial current is okay and now this is how the actual movement occurs for the changing of the tap position it is uh, to be noted that this changes occurs in the position in very small time in the friction of seconds in very small time this uh, tap changing process gets completed so that is the reason there is uh, very less charging current and that also you can limit using this resistor Okay, so because of that, uh, we are able to do the onload tap changing in the transformer and we do not require to turn off the transformer to change the tap position. Okay, so this is basic about the tap changing in onload condition. Now, for 66 by 11 kV transformer, we are having 17 tap positions. Okay. So this is the, from the nameplate of 11 by 66 kV transformer. In this you can see this 20 number uh, tapping connection is remaining constant and this all these different are changing. These positions are changing. These connections are changing with the tap positions. And you can see percentage LV tapping from 1 to 17 it is increasing. Okay, and uh, respective LV voltage levels. So, at you can see 100% LV tapping at tap position number 5, 11.55 kV. So, this is tap position number 5 is the normal operating tap for 66 by 11 kV transformers. And if you want to reduce the voltage levels, uh, on the HV side there will be 66 kV and on the LV side, Okay, if you want to reduce the voltage levels, then tap position has to be reduced and increase the voltage to so increase the tap position. Now, uh, there is also a winding diagram on the nameplate itself. Uh, over here, you can see uh, the secondary winding is like this, okay, and on the primary winding, OLTC is shown. So, OLTC, you can see this 20th number of connection, it is remaining constant and this number tappings are changing okay and two number of position is on the other side and of the tapping okay 
and then this is one number that is going to different connection of this winding itself so this is all about onload tap changing and how you can change the voltage levels by increasing the tapping numbers so uh, i hope you have understood many questions about onload tap changer the basic principle of how it works in this video so we will now see um, how the mechanism operates okay of the tap changing transformers in the next video so you can ask any queries up till now in the comments below keep watching the video and enhance your knowledge and keep sharing thank you